the Whose Turn Is It Anyway podcast proudly sponsors the 24-Hour Board Game Marathon, a charity event based in Ilminster, Somerset, raising monies for Cots for Tots Bristol, a charity that specialises in helping neonatal babies in intensive care. For more information, look at their website, the 24 Marathon.co.uk, or find them on Facebook. Welcome to Whose Turn Is It Anyway, a podcast all about our gaming group and the games we love to play. I'm Becky, your current first player. This is my last episode in this cycle and I'll be passing over the first player token to Chris P, our resident ninja, for the next few episodes. Really excited to see what he'll focus on for his first time hosting topics, so keep your eyes and ears open for those episodes. I'm joined around the table today by Dan. Hello. Tambo. Hello. And Adrian. Hello. Our main focus for this episode will be roll and write games. But before we head into that, how's everyone doing? I am very tired. So I've had a long, long work week. And then I think I've worked out that this week I've played nine board games. Wow. wow. And wow. last week I played seven board games. So it's been quite a couple of weeks for, for getting through the board games. So I'm feeling oddly tired and kind of a bit just sort of like I want my bed at this point. But I shall continue soldiering on there soldiering, soldiering on. on how about you too yeah i'm okay i'm like adrian had a long working week it's the prom season at the moment for us oak oh, so yeah, all the schools are in proms yes no so it's been really busy but i'm okay it's a typical sunday evening for me cool cool how about you dad i'm very well i'm like yourself uh adrian i'm tired i'm uh going through a house move so trying to get all that sorted but um in my house it's more of a board game drought rather than a monsoon like in yours so nice. not played enough i want more i've got a got a hankering to play some more what about yourself, Becky? What have you been up to? I've had the entire week off and it's been lovely. Nice. Yeah. Uh, went to London for the day, just on myself, just by my little self, and bought Curly's birthday present of Gimli's axe. He already knows what he's getting. I've had a lovely week of sorting out all my arts and crafts stuff and, yeah, playing a few board games, but not loads. Beat a randomer at Ark Nova on BGA, so I was very excited about that. And uh, played some draft and write records. Nice. Nice. Yeah, in preparation for this episode. Good. But I'm back to work tomorrow, so. Boo. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, me too. It's all good. Without further ado, let's talk about Hex. So, what have we all been playing recently? Tambo. Oh, going straight into me. Right, okay. So, I've been playing a lot recently. I've had a big game day yesterday. played Mansions. I had to play it twice in a row because me and nephew love that game. Um, second time was just getting a bit much. Um, and then we played um, Terraform Mars Expeditions, which I loved. I always loved that. And a bit of Kapow. So I played that yesterday. But we I, on the Friday night, um, JP and I played the co-op Voidful on co-op. Uh-huh. Very, very fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's been a while since I played Voidful. So it was a good job it was a co-op because had, GP had to do a reteach, slightly reteach. But um, you walk in and it's so daunting, the board. It's just massive cluster. Yeah, it's just a it? massive a, cluster of like yeah. confusionness. But actually, when you sit down and all look at it, it explains it, and it actually, it does make sense. And you get, it's such a good game. There's so much to think about. I think one of my turns took about a half an hour just to think about what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I had to apologise. I'm sorry, JP, I'm trying to figure out why I got, if I did this. There must be a way of doing it. And But yeah, um, the co-op's really good. You have to, we both have to have a higher score than the hour at the end of it. Um, I mean, JP and I both were in 160s, which isn't a good score for Voidfall. We did a bad game, but we actually did beat the AI, which was good. Um, and it's just the combos you can do on it and the, the different types of just combinations of what you can do. It's just nine insane. action cards. Nine action Is it nine action cards or eight action cards? And it's eight. three actions per card. Yeah. It's just this when you when you're when you're looking at the hand you're looking at this and go hmm, what to do because there's so much to do yeah and each, each round has different time amount of card, rounds you have we had one with four one with five yeah and it's all like oh. so you got to do your turns in fives like oh. but yeah so much fun i really enjoyed it so i've asked jp to play another one so we keep it fresh in the mind even if it's competitive or co-op doesn't matter just play another voidful that's the thing with those kind of big games isn't it if you don't play them regularly yeah every time you play it's a bit of a you're back thing to learning you're it, back to yeah and then you do yeah, yeah. So, so obviously quarterbacking is not a great thing in co-ops, but how much do you have an opportunity to sort of talk through what you guys are going to do together, what the aims are? Yeah, like, we, we talk there? about it all, all together. And you have these actual, because um, you know you have your action cards, your eight ones you're saying, Dan, you have your free co-op cards that you can decide to play. So if you had the politics, 
but they draw random, so you have three random ones out of the set of eight, and you can decide to, then you play this card, you both get benefits. So it's really interesting. So you might want to play those cards so you both have a go, but the one in the one person plays the resources and the other person gets all the other actions. And it's really interesting that way. And you definitely have to work together. There's no point in one person running away with all the points because he might get 200 points. And then yeah. if I get 140 points and don't beat the AI, you both lose. Yeah. So you have to both beat nice. the AI to win. So yeah, you really do have to think about it and work together. Yeah, no, it's only because I've played a couple of, none spring to mind, but I do remember the experience of kind of having a couple of euro games where you don't really talk about kind of what your plans are for the turn that much. Kind of every now and again, it might be, oh, I need to play this or I need to do that. But otherwise, mm. so I was just wondering, because obviously it is quite a deterministic Euro game. Yeah. And I just wondered how much opportunity there was for that in there. So it's good to hear that there is plenty of plenty of reason to have a chat and a conversation around what you're doing and how yeah, you achieve I mean, I the goals. Yeah, I think that was the main one when you put one of those club cards in the middle of JP, both and I looked and said, what can we do to both benefit from this card? I mean, generally, if we didn't do that, you just go, well, I'm going to be doing this and this. Okay. But, but the co-op part with those cards really, really did make it really nice. conversationist. Yeah, I've not played a co-op yet. I played it. I played it a lot, um, competitive. Uh, I played it what probably six times in the space of like a few weeks. Yeah. But then I've not played it for a while now, and even now I'm not playing it for a while. I feel like I I would need another rules refresh because there's yeah. so much going on. But it's such a great game. Yeah. yeah but there are so many symbols and the, the, the symbology, isn't it? It's all about the symbols. Yeah. But once you have got the head around it, you do it. It, it just fine that's yeah. what i want to play again so those simple stay in my head so yeah. i know what it all means yeah really good cool nice adrian uh myself so uh, so i've been up to quite a bit recently of, of different board games and that and probably the most recent most exciting one was primal um which i've been waiting on for three and a bit years or whatever it is now but well worth the wait big boss battler um lots of good sort of deck building and card play um, and I'm really excited and I'll probably talk about that a little bit more further down the line, but I know that that's been covered fairly recently. So what I thought I'd talk about is Kingsburg. So Kingsburg is a game that I've had my eye on. It's turned up on some lists of good dice work placement games. Um, and I haven't got many of those. So I thought I'd pick them up and I picked it up over a year ago now and yeah, got that to the table and it was, I think it was produced in 2007. It's around then mid 2000s. And it is showing its age is the only thing I think, because there's a solid enough, enough game in there, but there's so much potential for AP as well and just kind of getting stuck in a thought process. So to give you a rough idea, the point of the game is that you're rebuilding the kingdom and what you're going to do is you are a, a sort of patron or whatever, and you're going to go to people within the kingdom. So you might go to the metalsmith or the like the Baron or whatever. Um, and they will give you very simple, basic, uh, like resources. So it'll be like, you can have a gold, you can have two wood. The way you go there is you roll your three dice and eventually you'll get a few more dice, but you'll roll your three dice. And let's say one comes up as a three, one comes up as a four and one comes up as a five. You can choose, bearing in mind, it's like worker placement. So I'll go place as many of the dice as I want to on one space. But then if you go on another space that I might want, I can't go there. So I could use it as a three, four and a five. Therefore I'll go to the three worker who will give me wood, the four space, which will give me whatever it is. And then the fifth space will give me something else. Or I could go to the fourth and uh, four and three is seven. So I could put those dice together and go to the seventh space. Or I could, for instance, put the, three and five together and go to the eighth space or I could put them all together and quick maths what's that seven and five is the 12 um so I could go to the 12 space and use all my dice at once on that space and that sounds probably fairly simple really the problem is is that everyone else has just rolled all their dice and you're looking at their combinations and trying to work who might work out who might block you so you imagine if all four of us roll three dice and I'm looking at you could do the the five space, the nine space, the this space. Okay, that blocks me there. You can go to this space and this space, or maybe we've both rolled 15, a combination of 15. And it's like, well, we could both go to the 15. Are you likely to want to go to the 15? So you kind of sit there for a little while trying to work out who can block you and where you need to get your resources from. Because the main part of the game really is you're building these resources to then make buildings, which will add up to a bit of an engine of points. And at the end of each, there's sort of three production phase. And then the fourth one, a mob attacks. And if you don't have enough standing army, then you lose stuff. And it's, 
you don't kind of know how much you're going to lose or how big the mob is. There's kind of it scales, but you don't really have much of an idea what it is. So you could potentially lose a load of resources if you don't have enough army to to back them. So it's a very simple, I'm going to spend this dice, I'm going to get a resource. I need three of this resource and one of that resource to build a tower, a chapel, something like that. The tower or chapel will give me uh, more army or cheaper resources or the ability to change my dice up or down one pip. Very simple stuff. All of it is very simple. But the rolling of the dice and deciding where to put it each production phase turns into such a sort of number crunchy who can do what round the table that it slows the game down so much while everyone just looks at their dice and works out what they can do. And then every time someone places a dice down, you're redoing that math Mm. because it's like, well, they've used their three now. Okay, so I can't go to the three, but I can go to the nine. But they might go to, and you're constantly remathing it. And eventually, when you've got enough dice, so you can get up to sort of, I think it's five dice in your pool, it starts to get too much, and you just kind of have to go, whatever, I'll play whatever I feel is sort of useful. And then sometimes you get left with a dice you can't use, it just feels like a bit of a waste. And it's just got that old feel to it because it's that kind of that downtime, that AP that a lot of designers now have taken out of games naturally. Um, because the puzzle in it is fairly decent. It's just that initial bit of rolling the dice and working out where you want to go, what you might need to block people, etc. just takes too long. It does sound really good, though, actually. It sounds fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I was, you had me that, uh, yeah. that, that dice production where you're moving dice and trying to work out kind of who's going where. Yeah. That was great. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm totally up for that. And again, this is the reason why I picked it up is because I was like, okay, fine. So you're going to roll three dice and any combination, sticking them all together, having them all three separate, sounds great. But when you've got sort of three or four players around the table and everyone's rolled a three are you taking the three first do you really need the three what happens if you leave it around is that three going to be taken it it is a nice crunchy puzzle but it just takes too long and everyone spends too long staring at their options and it just ground the game to a halt for me and i think there's games that are similarly simple now that would replace it Um, I'm, i'm sure there's people who still love it and probably have nostalgia for it more than anything for having it been a good dice worker placement game but yeah, it just it all slowed down a bit. It was a bit too long a game for what it should be because it slowed down that choice, that working out what you'll need to do with your dice. How many have you played? Three. So yeah, and I've played it two player as well, actually. So yeah. You scale well at two? So at two player you have, and I think at three player, I can't remember now. Two player you have dummy dice. Okay. So you roll a handful yeah. of three dice and then you put you add them together and put that on whatever spot that adds up to. So if that adds up to 12, you block the 12 space. Um, then let's say you roll two dice and you get 12. Then instead you split it into a six and you can't have the two sixes. So you just fill up one of the six spaces, for instance. But yeah, you there's like a blocking mechanic to stop you using all of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as I say, like it, it does kind of, it, it works as a puzzle. Like the puzzle itself actually really worked. And, you know, going for 18 sounds great and normally is probably the right thing to do, but isn't always, if you roll three sixes, going for the 18 is not necessarily always the right thing to do. But it could be most of the time sort of thing. So you're still evaluating that. What do I need? How do I get there? How do I get the victory points? And it's such a simple puzzle to teach, really. Um, so there is some real positives to it. It just felt dated. I think for me, I think if we'd been having this chat maybe 2014, 2015, when sort of games were really starting to move into that, being conscious of not having too much downtime and AP, it felt like a lot of designs were moving that way. I think if you'd asked me back then, I'd probably be telling you how good this game is. But now that we have all these games out there that's designed to be really quick turnover, it just felt like too much downtime at the beginning of each turn. So yeah, so that was... Nice. Still up for trying it. Still yeah, right same. Right. Dan, how about you? Uh, I've not had opportunities to play too much at the moment, not since after Expo, but I have played three games recently of The White Castle um, by Devere. I've gone a bit Devere mad, and I've bought quite a few Devere games. But well, all the Devere I've games. I've got all the Devere. Expo. <laughs> uh, but um, particularly The White Castle was the one I wanted the most. And um, for, for a, a little box game, there's a lot going on in there, as Adrian knows, as he loves it as much as I do. I haven't um, played it yet. You've not played it yet? No, I think I've watched five playthroughs. Oh, okay. But I haven't got it to the table Have yet. No, sat in shrink wrap on my shelf from oh, the expo. It is, it is really times. good. It is really good. It's yeah. like you've got nine turns. That's it. Yeah. You're in a Japanese castle. It's beautiful. It's, you but played I didn't it. Love it. You didn't, it's beautiful, you but I didn't. Maybe, maybe a second go and I actually might figure out what the hell is actually going yeah, on here. Yeah. But, 
I think yeah. with the craziness of the expo and and that, I think if we were sat down in more of a quiet environment, I think you probably would have been a little bit a better teach. But um, with with the game itself, you're in a Japanese castle. You're manipulating dice and putting them on on dice spaces to take actions, but you've only got nine of them, uh, and it's basically like here's nine turns make something work and that's that's it and i'm not normally a big fan of those sort of games i remember when i first got into the hobby and i played agricola and i and i got to the end of agricola i'm like was well, that it well, yeah and i'm like well i wanted to do everything i can't i can't i can't do everything and it used to bug me and then i my sort of my hobby and my taste kind of changed and and now that the white castle is like only nine turns bring it on let's do it and then let's let's see what you can make from nine turns and i lo- i like that it's quick it's snappy and it's you know, it's just clever based on the actions that you can take and, and you only get nine of them uh and it, but it's just it's just really good not much theme there there's a little bit of theme there um but the way that the dice move around and the way they're manipulating actions um to score points is really really good and it doesn't take long to play no it, it was good for that logan did a good teach i think at the expo thank you logan um Oh, I thought I, I, I taught just, it. Well, was it you? Or was it Logan? I thought I taught it. Well, if I did, I thought I thought I did a bad teach because no, it was like crazy in there. I, I understood everything that was happening. I just didn't really understand why it was happening. Yeah. Which is often my problem. So I don't think it's the teach. I think it's my brain. <laughs> but it's a very beautiful game. Yeah. Lots of very, very nice wooden meeples. I liked the kind of um, mechanic of you can only pick the dice at the ends, the edges of the row. Yes, That's the edge of the bridge. Yeah. You can't just go yeah. and help yourself to any old thing. Same. Yeah. You've got to pick either end which is really good i like the lantern actions obviously that you can take you can complete building up your lantern actions to take to get more things every time you take your lanterns which is quite good yeah that kind of combo aspect of yeah it. yeah um the second the second mini game that you get out of the white castle which is can you fit all the components back in the box <laughs> i don't like that mini game <laughs> do they make your box just a little bit bigger just a little bit i've just bought a load of uh more pla plastic to print a 3d printed insert because there's quite a few out there actually that are designed to fit them all back in and sets oh is there make setup easier and stuff yeah oh that's an idea so there's um what seems to be quite popular with them at the moment is um it's like it's got the grid with all the workers already on it oh yeah nice and then you just put the lid on it yeah pack away and then all you literally do is just take the lid off and they're sat out exactly as they need to be on the board yeah so proof setup and it makes it packing it away much simpler as well and the same with the the I think they're bridges, aren't they? The things yeah. with the dice on. Um, they've done some really nice, clever stuff with that on some of the... Th- Normally, I design my own, and I looked at how people had designed that and thought, no, I'll print out yours instead. <laughs> yeah, because, no, fair. Yeah. Sometimes you just can't improve perfection. Can no, you? they've clearly iterated on it a few times to get it to pack in the box and be easy to set up and all that lot. And nice. It looks really good. But yeah, it's one I'm really keen to to look at. The the thing that one of the things that caught me as well was that is it the farmers where you're kind of hoping that there's dice left at the end? Yes. Um, yes. on those bridges and yeah, you're kind bridges. of trying to guess who's gonna do what or go. Yeah. Is it gardeners? I think so, yeah. Something like that. And I remember looking at that and thinking, oh that's quite a cool puzzle because you're in a very tight Euro game, you're also playing the game of what does everyone else want. Yeah beyond just which dice are they going to pick and can I pick and choose it's which dice are going to be left at the end and I thought that was quite cool so yeah. I really can't wait to play it I'm really kind of enthused to give it a it's go a great but game yeah glad you've enjoyed it I am um, oh I wish I had some friends that had 3D printers who could potentially yeah, print me an doesn't, insert yeah. Ooh. mine doesn't stop so <laughs> just, for, not? just for my own stuff so there's no chance of getting anyone else I miss there. mine I if miss it's mine. got a small print bed I'm happy to do it cool I don't know how big's the print bed. oh yeah agent's well, nodding so yeah well the box is smaller than most it's tiny. No, most three D print printers. Is, my print bed is little. Oh, okay. Is it? Even my Prusa Mini would handle most of the the components. So Prusa is the best brand. Best, best, best ever. brand. I'm going to pick two because it's my last episode, and I'm going to break the rule. So there. <gasps> so there. Um, we played Merchants Cove the other day. Um, that was me, Curly, Adrian, and JP. It was. And we had really good fun with that. It's my second play of the game, um, but it's super asymmetric that's the whole point of it really you're still um collecting workers in little ships coming to the dock then you're selling them your wares and the ones that don't make it to the dock become guild members um and each player has got a particular skill so for example the first time i played it i was the i think they call it the alchemist Uh the one that's mixing potions anyway um and I just had a little brain melt with how you make <laughs> potions. I just, it was really good, but I think I was trying to be too super efficient and only brew potions when I could brew all four, which is not the way to d- play this game, by the way. Um, so this time when I played the blacksmith, I was just forging all the time. Like, nah, sod it. Let's just you know, two things to forge or all four, whatever. And that was much better, much better mm. this time. Um, 
Adrian looked sad at the start because you didn't have any points to start with and he was like oh everyone's good and then he just went mental with the points didn't you yeah again <laughs> i was playing the chronomancer or whatever it was called yeah. um so i'm messing around with time that was that play that's good yeah and I think, you really enjoyed it didn't you, i think there's a trick at the start that you're supposed to know about where you quickly whiz around the board quickly and upgrade your board right um that i did not spot and it meant that everyone else was producing loads of stuff and i wasn't but there's a good i, I enjoyed the game but the chronomancer as you go around the board, so you get halfway, like you're basically going clockwise around this board. And as you get halfway around the board, certain of your spaces that you're going to jump on are going to fall off the board. And then you'll do the other half. And then the next column out of the two columns of this sort of clockwise wheel will also fall off the board. And my brain was trying to do the thing where it plans ahead but not planning for the fact that these tiles were going to fall off the board. So I was like, right, okay, so I'm going to move around to this bit here and I'm going to be able to select this action, <laughs> except for I can't until I've already been halfway around the board again. All right, okay, get halfway around the board. Ah, uh, right, now that action that I wanted to do is going to fall off the board and I've got to put a new one in across the... And it just did not work with my brain. I just didn't enjoy the character. Not that I didn't enjoy the character completely, but... I felt like I was missing, constantly missing Chasing the your own trick. Tail. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I was planning for stuff that was never going to happen. But because you're just looking at your board layout and you're like, well, that's there right now. You forget that it's going to fall out before you get to it. That's the problem and I have with Spirit Island. Because you've got the fast spells and the slow spells, I can't keep in my brain what the board is going to look like oh, in okay. a bit. Like... People yeah, that was fine. From there and I was there fine and with there. that I on just... Spirit Island. It was just the Chrono. Uh, I say, I really wanted to give the Alchemist or the Blacksmith a go because I felt like they would be more my kind of game um, for doing it. But yeah, I enjoyed what I enjoyed the the character kind of for being funky and what it was. But my brain just wasn't working that way that day, and I just could not keep track of the spaces on it. So, and I think kind of to your point is that both good and bad. I think people will bounce off certain characters. Yeah, yeah, because. So. Like I, um, JP was playing the pirate or whatever he was, mm -hmm. the the boat ship thing, and that pirate, did not look yeah. interesting. Oh, to me. the captain. The captain yeah. did not look interesting to me at all as a character, whereas the other two did. Um, and I think people will bounce off or mm. or find their character, and it, it's quite a simple game if you're not moving around a lot of the characters. Mm. I think I think the game is in getting to play the asymmetric characters and yeah. discovering what they do. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to trying the blacksmith or alchemist. But I think if someone said you want to play the captain. I'd probably go I'll play something else, shall we? Because like, it just looked really boring, I thought. And there is lots of expansions now, which we've got a couple of at least, I think. One's called the Oracle, um, which is like a divining thing. I've not really looked at it properly. But um, apart from the uh, characters called Hagatha, which I thought was quite, quite funny. It was her all along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked it. Well, that was good. So for my second pick, because... I'm going to choose to. Um, I'm going to talk about Tenby, which is um, a game that was um, sort of lent to us in its prototype form. Unfortunately, we received it just, I think, just after the, its Kickstarter had finished, which is a real shame. Um, it's a card drafting game by uh, Cozy Cub. The idea is to build streets in Tenby, the Welsh coastal town, and basically try to match the features of the card. So you've got cards that are either buildings like houses or a fish and chip shop or whatever uh, piers and landmarks um you play it over 10 rounds and you basically kind of draft cards each round it had a really clever little mechanic we, me and curly were playing it just two of us and it had a really clever mechanic of the kind of actions that you can take are depicted are sort of pre-described by three cards and you can only pick one of them one's going to be worse than another one so if you get a this easy card like a simple card with not much stuff on it first you're going to get first pick next time so it was a really clever way of making sure that one person didn't just basically run away and just pick all the good stuff um the artwork's really really cute uh, not cute is the wrong word really beautifully simple um but like the little clouds have got little smiley faces on things like that. Mm. i just really liked it so the point is basically you're trying to build these streets and decide what buildings or peer pieces or whatever go next to each other. So one card might say you're going to get three VP for red buildings either side. So you're kind of trying to make sure that you get the red building next so you can place it next to it. There's a little kind of mechanic in it called uh, with like life, life boys. Um, what are they called? Like a ring, red and white stripy ring, life ring. Life life. Life. Yeah. So you collect them. Um, 
sometimes. And you can use that to kind of make a little gap in your street. If you think, oh, God, I really need that card, you can kind of spend your little life rings and pop another card. It's really cute. Um, The Kickstarter has finished now, like I said, but it can be played on Tabletop Simulator, apparently. Um, Curly obviously won the game, but not by many points. So I was quite pleased with that. But yeah, I think the thing that really jumps out is the lovely simplistic artwork that's really obvious and it makes the game play. You, you really have to look at the cards in detail because that's the sort of point of the game. Like, oh, that one's got a street lamp in it. So I need to put that next to this building because I get three points if I've got you know that sort of thing. So yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Um, I think it's going to RRP about £25. Um, not sure on time frame. And I think it, by the end of the year, I think he's hopeful to get it out. So yeah, check that out. Tembi by Cozy Cub Games. So roll and write and the many variants thereof are games which involve rolling dice or selecting tiles or cards, etc. And marking your choices down, usually on your own personal little score pad or playboard. One of the most famous ones is Yahtzee, which I'm sure most of us have played, um, which uses dice and scores sort of certain combinations of dice in a similar way to poker hands. Okay. Tambo hasn't played no, not Yahtzee. Me. Just Sorry. Have you not played it either? No. I've not played Yahtzee. No? What? Oh, thank God for that. I'm not the only one. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. like, considering it's age, it's old. It's super old. It's old. Yeah, you just roll like five, five dice, six dice. Five dice. Five dice. And basically you've got like a list of hands. You're Poker hands. craft. Yeah, like pairs, three of a kind, flush, run, whatever. Oh, and okay, you make a okay. choice each time. Oh, actually that's got a pair of fives. But it's also got a five and a three, so do I roll things again to count for something? So, yeah, you kind of have to make your choices. Fair enough. Um, they're commonly small box games and often play fairly quickly. What are some of our favourites? Dan, I know you really like Roll and Rise. Oh, I love Roll and Rise. So I, I've got loads of them. I've played loads of them. I've got loads more in my collection still sat there in my pile of shame. Pioneer Rails I just picked up by Dranda. Ooh, that yeah. looked good. Yeah, it looks great. I saw it at Expo. I didn't pick up a copy. And I saw someone afterwards selling it uh, like secondhand. I think it was the Kickstarter one. And they only played it like once. I'm like, well, I love that. And it was much cheaper. I thought, we'll crack on. Um, so it's on my pile ready to play. But I'm looking forward to it. It looks like my sort of thing. Um, but out of probably out of all the roll and rights I've played, the one that I've played the most would probably be Welcome To. Uh, was that by Blue Cocker Games, I believe? Love that game. Played that for the first time at your house. Yeah. And yeah. won, believe it or not. Yeah. That's what made me like the game. So no, that's not what made me. Like. <laughs> we played the um, festive edition because there's quite a lot of different versions, mm. isn't there? There's loads, yeah, yeah. They've done like a, done a Fallout style one, they've done a Halloween style one, a Christmas one, and then there's the standard one. Uh, and all you're doing is you're flipping three cards on each turn, and every player uses the same three cards. And those three cards um, and the other three that you've yet to flip over have symbols on. So you're combining symbols with door numbers. Uh, and you're literally writing down these these door numbers down on three streets to try and make um, like boroughs of houses, uh, and you're trying to score points that way. Um, it's really simple, but there's there's definitely a brain burner element in there. Um, but you are very much kind of playing your own game. I find a lot of these roll and rights you are playing kind of your own game rather than kind of manipulating other people's boards and that kind of thing. But that's kind of the nature of what it is. Um, but welcome to does a great job of that it's really really good and there's lots of different brain burning elements in it there's bits where you can get a penalty to to lose points if you're not too careful um and it's just you know and also the player count is unlimited as long as you've got enough sheets as many players can play it i think that's one of my favorite things about roll and rights like you said they're kind of kind of solo games that you're playing in company but you don't have to yeah and i quite i quite like that I quite like that. It's quite a divisive way of playing, mm. though, isn't it? Mm. I, I say I love roll and write rights, but a lot of the f- original ones I put in front of people. Apologies, Becky, this is tangent already. But um, a lot of ones I put in front of people, they didn't love them because it's that solo game that you're playing together, like parallel play almost, isn't it? Mm. Of kind of who gets the best score, but really you're just playing your own game. But there's a lot of games out recently that I found kind of try and counteract that in some way which i'm sure we'll get to but yeah it's quite i, th- I feel like it either makes or breaks kind of whether you're a roll and right or a flip and right or a verb and right person yeah because it's that do you want to play the parallel play solo game or not it's funny funny you said it because i don't i'm not a big solo gamer yeah never have been nope. i played one game solo game black orchestra oh god beat the game in my first single play and I went, really yeah yeah wow and i'm like 
that was I, I don't sure I like playing solo stuff anymore. Uh, and I didn't. That was it. I didn't play anything else. I'm not, I want to play Anachrony solo because it's one of my favorite games. Frostpunk is my favorite game, and you could, that is basically just a glorified solo game with other people, really. Um, but. I don't have that problem with rolling rights. What's Black Orchestra? Sorry, I've never heard it's, of that. Have you seen the film Valkyrie? No. So, which is Tom Cruise being a German trying to kill Hitler in a bunker. Oh, okay. Sounds basically problematic. That. It's basically that. It's the the plot that was there that's basically can you kill Hitler? Mm. And it's okay. notoriously hard and quite random. So if you did it first it, turn... It was, but the thing is, is, it's random, yeah. but everything was literally coming up Millhouse. Yeah. Everything was rolled perfectly or everything was placed correctly that I managed to beat it the first time. Nice. Which is mad. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I, I double-checked the rules. Went, this is too easy. Have I really beaten it? No, it's no, not too it's easy. Not, am it's I, not am I really thing. that like, amazing? Like, oh, yes, you know, yeah, yes. oh, clearly I am. <laughs> but I just couldn't believe that I beat it the first time. And I did. And I'm like, well, I'll put that back in the way and I sold it. Uh, it just wasn't for me. I thought I don't like a s I don't like a solo game that's too easy. But then I read up on, on Board Game Geek that people were saying, you know, it's not actually that easy. How on earth did you beat it first time? <laughs> but I did. It just it just came out correctly. You probably nice. just played it one more time. You might have had a real hard game then. I might have done. Yeah, I might have worth well, it. But quick rally ahead. Hundred percent success. Go for that. That's just it. Yeah, 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 complete yeah. it, mate. I can hit <laughs> it. Perfect. Job yeah, done. That's it. Done. I think Curly's not massively into um rolling rights. I think probably because of the things you're saying there, Adrian. You, he likes that contention. He likes that kind of, am I making the efficient thing? Which, I mean, mostly roll and rights are about efficiency, but your own efficiency mm. compared to your own efficiency. So maybe his scores won't change very much, which is maybe why he's not really very interested in it. But he really did like Molehill Meadows. Chris from Unfringed Games um, gave us a copy of Molehill Meadows, bless him. But I have actually since gone out and bought a copy of it too. Um, and that's a, a really great sort of flip and write. So you've got... Tetris pieces, sort of, which are on cards which you turn over and you have to kind of scribble that kind of tunnel out on your map. So you're basically playing as a little mole, Mika the mole, and you're going variously through different things on your board. Apart from rocks, you can't go through those. You're trying to connect certain pieces to other certain pieces um, and um, gobble up worms for your special worm powers. So you're kind of turning these cards over um everybody who's playing the game together scribbles out this little tunnel so it is collective but you're not ever going to have the same kind of game as someone else because of the way you're going to place them and, and where you first start that kind of thing um curly really liked how you could get the um worm powers asymmetrically and then do your sort of special abilities with them so that was really good there's a huge pad of the maps in your in your um player box so you can play this game tons and tons of times and you could play it solo if you wanted to and just basically try and beat your own score it reminds me of um another game that's similar to that well it sounds similar which is um isla cats is it the island right version of that but I didn't overly like it. I wasn't a big fan. Because I've played the original Isla Cats and the game is almost virtually identical apart from your drawing tetramino shaped cats on a boat. And it's like, well, what's the point in doing this when you can just play the full version? And I've already got that one, so I'll just play the full version. But Mole Hill Meadows sounds kind of similar, but there's no other version of it. And I think if I was to go for either, I'd probably go for that. And it sounds different enough. Yeah, I think when you've got um, different kind of goals every time so if you can manage to munch through all the red flowers you get so many points if you can manage to connect this little um square on the bottom edge of the square to the top edge of the square which is basically like a little ant trail you get more points if you can manage to gobble up these worms and then you can maybe draw the next shape twice or or whatever so you've got quite a lot of variability in it which is does keep you coming back for more. You can't I love, just. I love Tetris. You so. can't just keep playing one game of this. You have to keep like, no, no, I can definitely get better next time. Are you any good at Tetris, Adrian? I haven't played in forever. No, I've just, I've just today played Smartphone Inc., which is yeah, that yeah. Yes. covering up yeah. tiles thing, which is very Tetrisy. You I was, like that game? You played. I love time. that game, yeah. and I've just showed it to another group who love it as well, and they're like, yeah. we need to play this again next time we're together. So, loving that that's getting a bit of love from nice. the other groups. One thing we better mention, I know JP isn't in this episode, but we better mention Super Skill Pinball because that's one of his absolute favourite, favourite um, roll and rights. I've never played it either, mm. but he just loves it. So if nobody's played Super Skill Pinball and you like the sound of it and you've heard JP mention it, go and check it out because he, he 
raves about this the game. The pad looks cool. I've seen the, how it looks and the artwork looks really neat, but I've never, never played it. I think that's a really big thing, isn't it? The artwork's got to be good for these because yeah. you're mostly looking. I think that's what's so good about the Welcome To range. Mm. It's really simple, but really easy to, to understand. I don't know. One of my favourites is Railroad Inc., which basically has no art apart from the stuff yeah. you draw on it. Yeah, and my drawing is terrible, so there's no good art in that because <laughs> you're lucky if my roads look like roads, let alone anything else. But yeah. Like cartographers as well, isn't it? But cartographers almost encourage you to draw your own yeah. and make it look pretty with different, mm. you know, with different colours colors and that. Um, but I think there's, a, there's one game that is um, that people in the, in the roll and write category have called it an exam paper and it's more like taking a test than it is a game and that was um imperial settlers roll and write all right it's a bit not so not to look to that one it's been out for a while now so you know portal games imperial settlers and they've had a few imperial settler games in the in the series but i think it was the second in the imperial settlers games to come out i actually really really enjoyed it two really nice wooden dice uh and if you've played imperial settlers and you know kind of the premise of how it all works it's civilizations kind of against each other but it's very very light um but people explained it to be more like an exam paper or an activity but that's because i don't think the page looks very pretty Mm. um i think there's not much going on there ganshon clever is just blocks of color that you fill in with numbers so it couldn't look more like a spreadsheet if you tried it sounds Um, like sudoku or something it's true uh, yeah, it's the idea of that is you're going to roll some dice and you're going to try and pick the best dice for you. But if you pick the best dice, you won't get more dice. So you kind of need to pick a middle dice and then you'll get a few more dice. And then whatever you haven't used kind of goes up to offer to other players. So it's that balance of trying to get the right dice as opposed to just getting lots of dice that work for you. Um, I played a couple of games of it in the end um, using a, a like a fan made solo mod. It was fine. Uh, I'm sure multiplayer, it's much better. But Is that I just, a sequel? Yeah, they, you've had yeah. Ganshon Duplet and Ganshon whatever three or something. There's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's been three at least out. Um, and they get loads of love. But I don't know. I think it's just the fact like, again, it's that thing of you're not really interacting much. And the people who I would normally put it in front of don't really like get on with Roland rights. So... And because there's no artwork really to it, it's quite hard to put in front of someone and say, oh, you might enjoy this. Um, so I only played it solo and it was fine. But but then Yahtzee doesn't have any artwork. It is just a notepad. Yeah. With a bunch of squares yeah, and a bit of writing on it. And I've played Yahtzee probably I've, well over 500 times. I, I really, I've played it so much. And it is you know, definitely a gateway game, I guess, if you wanted to call it that. It's mass market, but it's fun i played loads of that on the computer Same. as a kid yeah. and then on my phone sort of you know when i got a phone that could play those sort of things and i think that that is one thing that um i think lends itself well to sort of roll and write is the kind of computerized versions that's where i tend to play most of mine partially because curly doesn't really like them that much um like next station london um i haven't played the tokyo version but i really really like that game and i totally would have bought it but i just know for a hundred percent it would have sat in the box on the shelf mm. and i would have really really rarely played it but at but, least it's a small box yeah mm, and that's true. that is a, and good a nice thing box yeah yeah they are they're really good but yeah you can play them on games like you know sites like board game arena um yeah. and i think that's really good i played today um draft and write records on board game arena one of my current favorites really really like it out on there. i think curly might like that because it's got a little bit of kind of combo Well, you're drafting, right? So you can do the thing you do when you're drafting, which is you can look and see what other people want and draft. Hate draft. Hate draft, basically. Draft (laughs) away from them or give them bad choices or whatever. Because quite often when you get down to the last two or three options, it's not really what you want. So what you're trying to do is, because if you can't play a card, you get a A calamity or whatever Mm. it's called, which means it's minus points. So what you're trying to do is give yourself enough of an out that when the person hands the next, that you're likely to have something that you can play so you don't have it. But at the same time, trying to pass on rubbish because once you've had the first couple of cards out of there, quite often there's not really a lot that's like, I must have these. It's then about getting little combos and trying to mitigate issues. But it's just that drafting. The rest of the, the rest of the writing is quite sort of quite common draft and write or not draft and write, but flip and write, roll and write kind of feel is just fill out boxes to get combos to do bits and pieces. But the actual drafting part turns it into the game that it is. Well, I was only playing solo, so I wasn't really oh, doing the, the sort of drafting bit, but I still really liked it. Nice. Still really liked it. If there's anyone that's like, that likes a draft, it's Curly. 
Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> he, he, does, he does love a draft. True. Yeah, he does. He does. You might so, win him on that. Oh, I don't know, mate. <laughs> well, I got 136 on my first game and then 90 something on my second game. So nice. either beginner's luck or I just got crap on the second time. You can play Welcome to on BGA. Huh. I played it a few times on there. It plays yeah. really well. Yeah, I think this is, is a really good platform to play those kind of solo y type games. And I think it, it, you know, on a computer, it lends itself nicely. You can do like a little tick or a little line or whatever. They're quick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So people may or may not have noticed, Tambo's been quite quiet in this episode so far. It's because we realise that he hasn't actually played many Roll and Rights. Many? Oh, hardly any. Well, you've played one, though, haven't you? I have. Which you liked. Uh, his Twilight Inscription I have played. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a big Roll and Rights. Yeah, that's yeah. a big one. Play, play it's not a go, small go one, go like back right, a little no. pocket one. It's a big one. Yes. I've played it once, though. So. But you did like it. I remember you saying I did. I enjoyed it. it, actually. really enjoyed it. Um, the dice look amazing, by the way. They're really big, chunky, bright, colourful dice. Just just throw that one out there. Um, I can remember you, you know, it's, it's Twilight, really minimized Twilight Imperium, really. And it's a quick play. It's really small. How does it compare to Twilight Now, Twilight Imperium is completely different, I think. I mean, it's all the same symbols and all the same kind of thing, but Twilight Imperium is a completely different game. Um, I was really good. You, um, I, I remember Jay went down the research track and he, he, he did really well. He seemed to be concentrate on that curly one I believe um, I can't remember too much of it uh, the military track you got to draw your ships into certain sh- shapes I remember so there was some kind of drawing element drawing on all the, the ships the, and, and yeah. you have to fit them in the right way and to continue up to get more fleets you have to do it right so they connect to each other it was so on the, on the military one um, so yeah and um, I went high heavy on exploration you have to draw your map out your routes of which planets you want to line up to and you, you can get a lot more dice and you, you know, it was good fun that's what I can remember. It's, it, we played it within a, two and a half hours, I think. So it's, so it's not Twilight Imperium. That's the whole day thing. <laughs> so um, it's still a roll and write that takes two and, and a half yeah. hours. But so that's long takes, for roll and write, right? Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. So, it normally but, takes like 20 minutes, 40 minutes an hour, maybe for like roll and writes. Right. Okay. Like, I, I don't think I've played a roll and write longer than an hour. I know Hadrian's Wall Hadrian's exists. Wall. Yeah. But again, there's a couple of things that really annoy me with roll and writes. And one of them is games that look like they should be a board game, to your point earlier, Dan that they've turned into a roll and write. Mm, and yep. the only reason why I can feel, I feel like they've done that is to cash in on the idea of a roll and write. And Hadrian's Wall just looked like that. It looked like this could be a normal board game, but they've turned it into a roll and write and I'm not quite sure why. So I stayed away from that one. I've got it. I've not yeah. played it, but I've, I, I learned the rules and I, and I kind of get those vibes as well. I still want to play it, um, but I definitely got those because it's like two sheets of A4 paper. And it's like you're looking at it and you're looking at how you kind of you market and, and it's like, well, this could be probably a board game. And you, yeah, you're right. You've just kind of gone for a different kind of market. Yeah. But it's those companies that that make a game that is a game and then they make a roll and write from it. And then it doesn't deviate too much from that that, that mechanic of the original game. So Isle of Cats doesn't deviate as much. I played the flip. I played the, uh, the roll and write and just did not like it. I haven't seen, and this is kind of my second point, is that I haven't seen many games that are the roll and write or flip and write version of a like a well-known title. So you think about there's a roll and write for Castles of Burgundy. There's a roll and write for like Lost Cities and stuff like that. Big games that people know, that people love, that do really well. And then you're like, oh, there's a roll and write or flip and write version of that. I can't remember the last time I saw people ranting and raving about how good that they were as a roll and write or flip and write. Mm. just feels like it's cashing in on a on another name Catan. and so i pretty much blank ignore those now when they come out because i'm like well it may be a great game but the fact that you've almost felt the need to cash in on some other name says to me it's probably just an average game it, again it's that's just a biased thought process i feel like that i've built up but that's kind of those are my two things is should this have just been a board game and is this just cashing in on another name and you've just decided to make a roll and write for it? They're the two things I just don't look at anymore. But you could say that you could say that the same with Twilight Inscription, being that it's a cash in. Yeah. But I think that it does it does deviate enough from the original game. And obviously if you wanted to play Twilight Imperium but couldn't spend eight hours on it because you haven't got the time, but you could spend two and a half, then maybe inscription might just tick the box for you. Fair it enough. might scratch the itch. Um it Personally, it didn't for me. I wasn't a big fan of it. I thought it was okay. And you can't beat the original. And sometimes maybe you should just make the time to, to sit eight, eight hours across and play it. Um, but I think, yeah, I think there's probably enough people out there to go, you know what, inscription, yes, it will take a box because I can get the same itch. 
It's a, it's a reason you don't play them, T. No, I, I've never played. I've never had the opportunity. So I have a question then. So as I'm new to it, so what game? We, what's the best Ron White game to introduce someone who hasn't played Ron White? Which one would you mm. recommend? Ooh, is it Yahtzee? As simple as Yahtzee? I mean, Yahtzee is the the original rolling a dice, ticking a thing. Um, I think for a bit more interest, Next Station London or Molehill Meadows is a okay. really good shout. Rustling Leaves. Yeah, that's the one you showed me um, at last marathon which i really liked so that mean this marathon i have to show you another role yeah yeah well yeah. see i've been to marathons with you and i've been to a quick i've been to loads of game conventions and i've never you never bought one right to the table tea. well i don't own many but so I'm, bring bring one I'm, and yeah. i'll play one yeah. so they do sound good I own lots. Yeah, <laughs> i've got loads so yeah i definitely <laughs> would like to try one so for me when recommending them the, the question is is are you happy to do that side by side sort of solo play almost where you're just doing your own thing and having fun or do you need that element of contention or something to Act. to to play over to compete against because mm. i think that decides on what kind of roll and write you offer oh, okay. because they kind of they've they now sit it didn't feel like it used to be a way but they now feel like they sit in one of the two camps they're either designed to have a bit of contention a bit of interaction or they're designed to play solo just so you can play for the highest score on each of your own pads i would thing. i would be happy to play both but i think the solo one would be me it's less plus you just concentrate on your own game right yeah so that's that's better for me nice personally Mole such Hill a good Meadows. point molehill yeah. meadows then i reckon i'll yeah. bring cool please do yeah i think you'll yeah like I, it. I, next station london railroad inc both good for me oh. but yeah the reason why i ask is because get on board is the one that i've shown to people that don't like that and seems to have landed well yeah. mm. um, because again you're filling up a board while you're while you're ticking off your own sheet you're putting little routes down on a board so you can block people's you can kind of not ticket to ride them but you can you can make it harder and more expensive for them to go down the routes they might want to go down and right. it adds that contention and so they're kind of my they're all making railways and stuff like that but they're the kind of two camps they're the two games I recommend for the two different camps okay cool yeah nice so we did mention that they're usually cheaper, although I was looking earlier and Sagrada Artisans, it's got an RRP of 75 quid. Although it's a legacy game, but that's like a colouring in, beautiful colouring in book. But Sagrada. Just, I no, didn't, I hated it. Oh, I really I like it. I absolutely hated it. It's fine. Role player is better. Yes. And it, 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 it is. And I've got role player and I've got all the expansions and I love it. Yeah, I'm selling mine, but I've had a, so much of a play out of it and yet. I would always play that over Sagrada. Yeah, so same. it's like... you got the big box. What, a role player? Yeah. Now I've just got all the expansions. Yeah, i got the big box for it, so it all goes in a little bit of desperate for an insert. Um, because there's <laughs> so much stuff that you get in that box. But it, yeah, role players. Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I don't think Sagrada... Is it a, and it is a roll and... It's not a right, but a roll and a place your dice yeah, sort wrong, of a yeah. thing. Um, but the ones you pick, obviously someone else can't pick. So there is that kind of contention. Um, but yeah, they're normally cheaper is one of the pros, but not that one. Um, and we already mentioned, you know, they're usually quite quick unless it's Twilight. Um, yeah. <laughs> Twilight yeah. Inscription. Um, you can play them multiplayer as in loads and loads of different people, especially if it's that kind of sort of almost solo play. Um, taking up less space in your Calax we mentioned, which is quite nice because they're usually small boxes. Mm. Um, yeah. And no long waits for everyone else to take their turn often, which is quite nice. That's when I lose a lot of interest in board games. If you've got to sit there for a thousand years while everyone else decides their thing. Yeah, because it's normally roll some dice or flip a card and everyone does what it says on yeah. it. They're, it's simultaneous. Their yeah. personal, like you were talking about with Molehill Meadows, the um, what they're actually doing might be different because they have different options. Like yeah. I've, I've flipped a triangle. That means I get this action, but you get that action because your little board says the triangle is this instead. That happens cool. quite often as yeah. well. So you might be doing different things, but you're doing it all simultaneously 90% of the time because the one bit you're doing is just flipping something quite often. Yeah. I think some of the cons can be if you're using like a little scoring sheet, if those run out, then mm. you can't play the game anymore. However, has anyone ever played a roll and write so much that they've finished the, the little scoring pad? Not a roll and not a roll and write. I've played a game where I have used and I've finished up a scoring pad and that was Caverna. Oh, wow. But okay. I've finished all of what was supplied. I've played it that many times, but um, that doesn't happen often. But if it does happen like for a game like that you could find one easily and you could print it off bgg yeah but when it comes to a roll and write then 
like, like with Welcome To, for example, Welcome To, when it first came out, came out in a box, you've got a pad of oh, however many sheets, and if you run out, you run out. But they did a Kickstarter campaign where you could have um, the um, reusable sheets mm-hmm. oh, so that okay. you could so the dry wipe markers mm-hmm. and then you could reuse them. So I backed that because knowing that I'd never, ever run out. And even if I did, didn't did like to play it that way and want to play it with the pad, you could just photocopy that. A lot of mm-hmm. people uh, laminate, like when they get down to their last few sheets, I've seen them laminate that last sheet yeah. like or last four sheets or whatever so that they've got that similar thing. I've got Railroad Inc. There was a board I just sat on the top of the box. So it was the one I always used. And kind of that shiny surface was starting to come off mm-hmm. where I was writing and like rubbing the, the like whatever I'd done, rubbing that off. That had worn through, started to wear through. So it's lost a bit of its shine. So it's now not so easy to draw on. So I've had to kind of cycle that to the bottom. So that's probably the closest I've got to using up. Have you um, seen, sorry, have you seen Railroad Tiles? Have you booked, have you seen that? I have seen Railroad Tiles and I've looked into a little bit of it and kind of put two and two together with some of the mechanics that are, I think are in it. But I'll keep an eye on it because I do like Railroad Inc. so yeah. much, but I think it's going to do very similar to what I said where if you've got a main game and you bring out a roll and write, I feel like they've done the opposite of that, oh, which is they've yeah. got a really good roll and write and now they've tried to turn it into they've a board a game. game. Yeah. And they can't just make the same game, so they've had to add a few extras. Maybe completely wrong, but that was the feeling I was getting out of it. But I was really hoping to try it at Expo, but obviously it wasn't there. No. So I'll probably, I think Essen's probably my next opportunity to give it a go. So I'll definitely give it a go because I like the roll and write so much, but I'm not, it's not top of my excitement list for Essen. It looks like the sort of game that you could quite comfortably play over a cup of coffee. Yep. And yeah, I, I agree. And I quite like, and it looks super zen and chill. I've not, I don't own any of the roll and write versions of it, although I've been tempted to buy them a few times. Yeah. Um, and it would be up my street, but I saw the tiles and went, Oh, that looks quite nice. Maybe yeah. I might give that a go. Sorry, Beth. I think if you've if you've used your entire little pad of score score sheets or whatever, it goes to show you've played that game. You've a probably ton had of your, times. You've probably had your worth. twenty quid That's out of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. they're about twenty quid, give or take a bit. You'll either know that you're going to buy another one for twenty yeah. quid, or you're you've had your use of it and it's done, sort of thing. Yeah. But I say most people just that I've sort of seen that have got down to their last few, just laminate the last yeah, handful yeah. and then they've got it forever. I think it, I guess it could be a bit of a, a, a con if, if you sometimes feel that there's minimal interaction, if that's what you absolutely rely on for a game, but the drafting mechanics can kind of counteract that if you really, really need some sort of form of interaction. I think I can't even tell you why I like roll and write games because I do like games with contention, but playing a roll and write, it, it doesn't bother me if there isn't any in there. I, I, I don't know if it's like, because there's no AP, the turns are quick, mostly, mostly they're simultaneous, but I think it's almost like, because you're in your own little world, yeah. you're in your own little zone, it doesn't matter what, what you're doing across the table from me, I haven't got to worry about what that person is doing, I can just concentrate on me. Yeah, I and think sometimes that's, that's quite nice. That's why I like them because I, I can, like Adrian, you were saying earlier about other games, you can kind of suss out that game that you were talking about earlier, Kingsburg, where you've got to sort of be working out, oh, well, they've got to, they've rolled a five and a four and a two so they could do this. I just couldn't be asked. I'd just be like, look, right, I'm looking at my dice and just sod everyone else. And if they land in the space I want to, oh, well, sucks to be me. I just don't think I could be bothered to spend that amount of time figuring it out. They rarely have a set up time of longer than five minutes, which is what I love about roll and writes is here's your sheet of paper. Here's your pencil. We might have to stack a deck or shuffle. separate out some cards and shuffle yeah. them back together or whatever. It's normally about it for setup. And I love that because okay. it's like, and they're normally like 25 minutes, half hour games. And quite often 25 minutes, half hour games used to, I think companies have got a lot better with it recently, but used to take 10 minutes to set up. So it's like, well, I'm, a, th- a quarter of my time is spent setting up a game, maybe a minute to set up, maybe 20 minutes to play most roll and writes or flip and writes, 25, half hour. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things I love about like roll and writes or whatever is, is that the, the setup is just so quick. Yeah. And I think you can play them with people uh, that maybe don't speak your language or English isn't their first language. Like when we were in Essen, we talked about this last episode, when we were in Essen learning to play Next Station London, there was not really a lot of, of text. Well, there was zero text on the on the cards themselves. So as long as you've got a rule book in your language, which Captain Google does a good job of finding that, you, you're sort of golden, aren't you, really? Yeah, yeah. I think there's, again, it's that limited interaction thing. Whether you love it or not, you don't really quite often have to speak about the game, like, because you're doing a thing on your own little piece of paper. So therefore, 
you don't have to talk to anyone if you don't want about the game. Like not saying you sit in silence, but you can just tick a couple of boxes off, have a chat while everyone else is working out what boxes or whatever they want to tick off or little lines they want to draw on theirs. And then that's it. You kind of carry on. So there doesn't need to be a level of interaction that sometimes you have to have in other board games. Yeah. Like when we were playing Ro- Rustling Leaves last marathon, it was kind of like, well, here's the game. Off we go. But we were talking about, not the game, we were just talking about other things. Mm. And it was just a general chit chat. And it wasn't, you know, you can, you don't, you don't need to focus heavily on what you're kind of doing. Yeah. Because what you're doing doesn't affect anybody else. It's very low stakes. You're not having to be super efficient all the time, 100% focus concentration or i don't find that or maybe i should but it's not something that is usually absolutely vital that you do all the time and i yeah i really like that so t basically what we're saying is play more role and rights mate you'll yeah, like yeah, it yeah definitely sold it to me I'll definitely <laughs> do it. it yeah of course well one of the um one of the things i think it was railroad inc did for their one of their kickstarters was they basically put out like a new like a role on each of their updates of the dice and you just filled out the bit of your sheet so everyone was playing across the world this one game where they were showing you what the role was each day or whatever um so everyone was kind of playing the same game everywhere and you just got to see all the cool things that people had done and like some people had made them real works of art like they had really spent time like coloring in and kind of putting cool little doodles around it and all that lot but the fact that some role and rights you genuinely could play across the world because you're like here's the number we've flipped or here's the what the symbol we've rolled or whatever and everyone could just play that wait 24 hours and then wait for six hours or whatever wait for the next role to come through and could do that and something quite cool as well as an option like i don't think most people will play it that way but the fact that a lot of these games you can play that way it's quite cool yeah yeah like i like that. that i think that's kind of wrapped up rolling rights isn't it Now it's time for our Would You Rather question, which comes from one of our coffee supporters, Bob Lewis. So thanks very much for your support, Bob. He asks, would you rather only play games you're not keen on with your family that they love or never play games with your family ever and only play games you love with your friend group? Can I go first? <laughs> Are you, is your, does your family listen to this? Nope. So you're fine then. Yes, you can go first. Uh, option B every time. So you're never going to play with your family ever again? I don't often play games with my family. Well, I say when you say family, I mean, if that includes Vicky. See, this is where my answer yeah, might this be is tricky. Too. Yeah, yours mm. would be tricky as well, mm. wouldn't it? So if it doesn't include my wife, who technically wasn't in my family until we got married, um, then I would say option B, because I don't often play games with my family. And when I do, playing a game of like Wingspan will normally take two and a half times longer. Not that I mind that, but it's because they don't play games often, so it naturally takes longer. So yeah. um, it, I would be playing games with my friends all day long. And Vicky was my friend before we got married, so definitely all day but long. But it's now your family now. But now is my okay, family. Okay, so does that change then if we're saying Vicky is in your family? Um, does Vicky listen to the podcast? No. <laughs> And still, no, I don't think it would change. We, we play games, but we don't play like, like JP rarely plays games with, with, with Shell. Mm-hmm. So um, it's, I play games more than he does with my spouse, but not enough to change it up. So I, no, okay. still wouldn't change. Fair enough. Tambo, because you play a lot of games with your family. Loads. You? So I would have to go with A. I would Aww, have to. I don't want to break nice. the hearts. No, that's nice. So you're yeah. going to sack us all off and play games with your family. That you don't even oh, really no, like. Don't like no, I don't want to. Well, I thought I had to play games with my family, but no. I can still play games with my friends, no? So you can only, only play... Only family or only friends. You can only play games with your family that you don't even like, but they love. Or... No, no, no it'll be you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they, they play a lot of games that I like, but they don't play, like, the heavier games that I like. Rummy okay. Cub. <laughs> no. Yeah, see, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> My brother's a lot of love Rummy Cub, and every time I go over see him, he has to, we have to play Rummy Cub, and I, I don't hate it, but I'm not good at it. Chris, no. your brother. So, yeah, Chris, my brother. Yeah. Why, have that, why did I know that we could have played loads of Rummy Cub? Yeah. Love Rummy Cub. I bloody love it. I don't mind. But I think he probably wants a break because that's the only yeah, thing he does enough. play. Fair so, um, <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, you know, but you guys, because I'd rather still play the heavy games, I think. Fair enough. Oh, me. Um, um, my family don't play games, so it's a pretty easy choice. Okay. I think I played, when I was growing up, I think with my family, I played one game of Cluedo, hmm. one game of Go For Broke, 
one game of Monopoly Junior. And I played a few games of like drafts and checkers and backgammon. Um, and I, I tried teaching, uh, to be fair, she did pretty well. I tried teaching, um, a younger family member chess and they did pretty well, but I haven't heard from them again. Like, as in, <laughs> <laughs> from, they enjoyed that as in, no, no. <laughs> it, they, I don't see them that often. And so I don't know if they're still playing chess or not. They did ask for a chess board at Christmas. So I think they might oh, still be, oh. which is nice, but, um, yeah. Other than that, I think that's all the board games I've ever played with my family. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, how I ended up this way, I have no idea. Because um, they just don't like, they don't buy into that kind of sort of social contract of playing board games very easily. There's, I feel like there's like the golden circle, all that kind of, we're all playing the game and we're all spirited into it and all that kind of stuff that board gamers naturally have. And my family just doesn't have it. So, yeah. So I will absolutely be playing with friends because the other option is not, not to play games, basically. So easy. 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 Yeah, no choice for me. So for me, it's going to be more difficult. So yeah, if Curly counts as my family... He counts. If he counts he as my family, count. yeah. because that is such a lot of what we do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to stick with only Friends. playing games I don't even... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> playing games I don't even like that he loves. So I'm going to be playing all sorts of crap, aren't I? And you're always going to lose. Oh, you're God. playing a lot of Lords of oh, War, do, do you know what? No, no, but I like that, so it doesn't count. So it'd be games that Curly really likes War that I don't even ring. like. Oh, 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 ring. Ring. No. oh yeah. Oh, I love him, though, so I'll have to t- pick that. I suppose. Oh. How could you abandon us? Oh. A, lot of, oh. a lot of Terraforming Mars. Uh, yeah, that, a lot of Ark Nova. Yeah, yeah I, I guess. But Bob specifically said games that you're not keen on, but you, but the family love. So we see. Yes, of course. So, so it's going to be War of yes, the Rings. War of the War Ring. Ring. It's going to be all the other blooming Persif. Oh God, I'm, dinosaur games. Oh, Persifera. No. What's wrong with that? I've not played it, but it's dinosaurs. We don't, we don't have time to start that conversation. It's dinosaurs. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Oh. But it's not just about dinosaurs. It's so good. It's so good. Perseverance. But then ma- yeah. maybe, no. maybe in, in have you the, played it? Yeah. Maybe in what? the way that no. In the way it's that Bob's fine. question. Maybe as soon as I start liking it, maybe we have to stop playing it. Maybe. Oh, but crap. Bob, as much as I enjoy your question, I've still not got over the fact that Adrian says that perseverance is just okay. Yeah, but when when he says fine, <laughs> he means he hates it. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, okay. <laughs> how many times have you? Pl- how many times have you played it? Just the once. It was fine. <laughs> Would you play it again? Not ideally, but. It was fine. I I'd like to change my answer to A, one. please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to have to sack you all off and, and play in the games that I love just so I can play with Curly. So thanks for that, Bob. Um, and if you want to become a coffee supporter, um, all the details will be down in our show notes. Now it's time for our penultimate turn. So what is coming up in everyone's gaming calendar? Anything really important that we need to uh, mention? Oh, yeah, that one little thing. Get your 24-hour board game marathon tickets. Yes, sir. Yes. Hosted at the Shrubbery Hotel in Ilminster on Saturday the 3rd of August. Easy to find on the old internet, the 24-hour board game marathon.co.uk. I, I don't know who runs this event, Some, but I heard that he's a big deal. He's a bit of a big deal. He's people, really, he's people really know shy him. and retiring. I don't, think, I don't think you can so. get on with him. I don't think you I don't like think him. I would. I don't think I would. <laughs> of course, hosted by our own Dan Apsey Mold. sitting across the table. Fantastic, fantastic event. And uh, Save the Babies, basically. Save the Babies. It's, uh, it's all for a, an amazing charity called Cots for Tots. Every bit of penny and pound that they make goes to that amazing charity. We raised £6,600 last year, and I still can't believe it now. Can we beat yeah. it this year? Uh, probably not. With the raffle that we've got, mate. Oh, the I raffle, don't know. This Woo. is exclusive news. The raffle, as of last tallying, is over five grand's worth of stuff. It's wow. amazing. Which is crazy. Yeah. You, it's and, mad. you and your guys. I can't definitely can't take all the credit. Lucy, no, just, yeah. Shelley, um, Logan. Kaya Emma. They were all amazing. Everyone just did such great great job and okay. and you'll see that you'll see the, the 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 crazy stack of raffle type stuff when if you come along and there's just there's just so much stuff but it's great and, it, and it's great that we've got so many people behind it and it's really really good uh but yeah over five grand it's the biggest we've ever done um uh, we've still got more things coming through and we've still got things that people are like glass cannon can't deliver 
apex until it's been fulfilled. Uh, so they're donating as well, which is great. And um, yeah, save the babies. It'd be nice to get to 30 grand at the end of this year as a total for over all the years. I'm just very yes. pleased it's after payday because I need to be getting involved in that raffle. That is it's deliberately amazing. strategic. Mm -hmm, I'm not surprised. So everyone should hurry up and buy those tickets. Do it. Can I, can I put down on the spot potentially here and say and ask for those who went last year, what is different or what can people be excited about this year that they didn't see last year? There is, if you're not coming, then there is a, a live stream the night before. Um, we've never done that. That is brand new. So we're doing an, a brand new live stream um, for the for the night before. We want to do an early access. So if you're coming to the event, you can come the night before and you can play games. And you can stay up until late and then have a sleep and then start your 24 hours nice and fresh on the Saturday. Um, but we are doing a live stream on that evening as well if you can't make it, as well as a live stream for 24 hours um, this year. We've also got new hosts this year for our live stream, but it's a, a mini host for every single game that's going up. So a couple from the podcasts are doing are doing one also i've got mark monk from um from ninja geek games is coming along as well uh and we've also got uh joel from devon dice podcast he's doing one um adrian's getting involved in a certain element of uh the live thing as well Keep a secret. Keep a secret. Oh, Keep i don't safe. know the secret i'm hosting uh art you're society, hosting as well yes that's, art society. that's all i know about um, oh, i want to get on that game but I'm too busy, so I can't. Uh, but also this year, if you are attending, we have a, a brand new marquee in the garden, which basically hosts all of the tournaments, which means that everyone was not so tucked in. It was cosy. Nice. It was Very cosy. cosy. It won't be as cosy this year, I promise. <laughs> There's so much room for uh, all the raffle All the extra activities. <laughs> yeah. So uh, take, your, take your pocket money, folks, because you're going to want to get in on that raffle. Please do. Mm. Sweets, crisps, everything else to keep you up for the 24 hours. Monster energy. <laughs> or other energy brands are available, are but not, not at the marathon. Are they not at the marathon? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much everyone's big big news. Has anyone else got anything they're looking forward to? Yeah, we've been playing Dinogenics on Tuesday. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that'd be good fun. Um, and I've also got a, a nice week cruise around um, Norway in three weeks, which would be nice for me. Fantastic. Holiday cruise. Are you taking uh, any board games? We're going to take little ones, yeah. Okay, what are you taking? Like two players. It's only me and my brother, so we're going to be free taking. And it's like Sky Team, probably like... Um, what else? Um, probably a tiny epics I'll probably take because oh, okay. they're nice and simple. To, just little travel yeah, games. Yeah. Not we're not. There's a lot of usage on the cruise in the evening, so we probably might not even get to play any. But we are. Of taking course, you will. Rummy yeah, Club. we will. Your brother's going to take Rummy Cub. You're going to have a great. No, we're not playing Rummy Cub. No, he has bought Travel um, Azul. I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah, he bought it at the expo, so that probably so, come on. Some the pavilion travel versions coming out soon as well. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Nice. that's my favourite version of Azul. I've only kept the first one and two. I didn't. I didn't keep the third or the fourth. I thought they were okay, but the first one and the second one were my favourite. Oh, interesting. First and third. Sorry, you're absolutely right. Yes, yeah, second one was stained glass, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. it was. Yeah. I kept the first and second one. Yeah, so that's going to be fun for that's me. That's really what I'm looking nice. forward to. Yep. Nice. nice. How was Sky Team? You probably talked about this before. But I haven't. No, I was actually nearly going to talk about it on the Hex, but I didn't. But it I'm... was one that I really wanted to try Essen, and the queue was a mile long. And then since then, I've seen people having a real good time with it. Is so... that Alicat? Sky Team? No. Mm -hmm. I can't remember them. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, they, names, maybe I don't know. they're the UK producers. Maybe, but is that why you're you're the co-pilot? You're pilot, the co pilot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're the captain, it. the co-pilot, and you, you roll the dice, and then you then you can discuss it. But then after that, you can't discuss anything, yeah. and you've got to slightly put your dice down. So it looks really interesting. It's really I good. I feel you like got... I need to give it a go. Yeah, really. I good. enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Good. I think it was um, Joel Joel's copy that me and Curly played, and it was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, just as you mentioned it, and I didn't realise that you had a copy. And I was no, like, my brother has a copy. I didn't, oh, okay. I didn't know nothing about it, so he bought it long. Nice. Then, yeah, yeah, it's been on my radar for a little while. I keep oh, telling myself radar. I need to. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I just wanted to, yeah, just thought ask, ask the question. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah, nice. I'm sure you're uh, looking forward to marathon, Dan. Anything else? I'm looking forward to moving house. And just I'm getting it done. Just getting it done. I hate moving. It's the worst job. Yeah, uh, once we move, we're going from a five-year-old house to a five-hundred-year-old house with a thatched roof. Wow. Um, am I scared about the thatched roof? Yes, I am scared. <laughs> uh, no naked flames. Yeah, but older houses have bigger rooms, right? They, yeah, yeah. So it's like we, we, it's, we're downsizing, but it, all the rooms are bigger, so yeah. it's kind of not. Um, but the I'm looking forward to playing games in there. The yeah, kitchen's definitely. really old, and hopefully we'll make it homely and it'd be nice. I'm looking forward to it. It's got an, a really old um, like settle that you can sit on and like literally load it with cushions. What's and, a settle? So it's like a really, really big, like think of a pew in a church, but like with a massive long back. Uh -huh. And it goes up against one of the back walls. Uh, so got one of those and we'll just load it with cushions and people can sit on it while we're playing games and it should nice. be nice and nice. cosy. Nice. I made your it. moving in card today. Oh, thank you. 
Becky, so what are you? Uh, what have you got coming up on the calendar? So I have just organised. Uh, well, I broke a promise from last week, which was that I was going to organise the Earth game for non-experts. I haven't done that, but I have organised um, terraforming Mars for non-experts. So basically, Tambo and Curly aren't allowed to play. But you know, you beat me last time. We played Who else was playing? You beat me, Becky. So I am not actually a expert. Uh, you I'm played upset. a lot of it online, this. Tambo. You played a lot of it online. Yeah, online's different. <laughs> it's completely different. Basically, um, <laughs> Rob and uh, Stu, friend of the podcast, wanted to play terraforming mars but they didn't want to play with someone that they knew was just going to absolutely take away you know run away with the game i've never beaten curly i'm not bad at it now i'm not too bad at it i can never beat him i've never beaten him close i think that's the point isn't it it's an anti-curly club basically that they've (laughs) built up (laughs) i'm not in an anti-curly club i've been curly a couple of times but we played it i played a lot more with him than you yeah 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 yeah. 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 i get i get i get better each time i play and i love the game i just wish i did i wish i got better every time i'd be an absolute bloody genius by now but not this time or next time i really enjoyed the last one we played anytime. it was really good really enjoyed that I, I like i like to play it i've taught the wife vicky knows how to play it um and we should play it again the two, but it doesn't it's not very good as a two-player game it needs to be three or more yeah i, think. I agree it, three is it, three or four is best so yeah me um me rob and Stu are gonna play so that's gonna be cool when, when when is that? That? Is next wednesday oh that's a bit close you're too much of an expert Dan. you're, you're too not much of an expert you're not allowed to play no. We'll just have our own expert game, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe. Yeah, but you can't play yeah. with our no copy. scrubs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can't play with our copy, but you could play at the other end of the table with another game, and then yeah. we'll just compare bring your copy. scores. Yeah. Your copy. Uh, you bring your copy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. We can have a terraforming Mars off. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna check my diaries if I'm free. <laughs> so, Adrian, what are you looking forward to? Um, a couple of things actually. So, I've. I've got sort of my groove back for painting miniatures again so i'm quite looking i go through i don't really enjoy doing that part of the hobby generally so i go through phases where i'm like oh i just want to paint some miniatures now so i've got my groove back for that so i've been painting some bushido up with the stuff i bought at the expo um and really enjoying that what paints are you using yeah just citadel yeah yeah i know funnily enough there was a conversation online the other day that i saw where people are like i don't get on with citadel what i find is that the other ones are just as good, but are harder to get hold of generally. Like you have to order them or whatever, whereas I've got a games workshop just around the corner. Mm, so I tend nice. to, I just tend to buy Citadel. And as long as you get these little vortex mixers, they're like, they're, they're called like scientific mixers. You're supposed to use them for mixing test tubes. You put your paint pot on top and just push down. It goes, and it mix up and you put a little ball bearing in. Yep. Becky, you shouldn't look that excited after I go. <laughs> 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 no, it's just, I bought some really nice, um, acrylic ink with a lot of uh, sediment in the sediment, bottom sort of thing exactly. pigmentation and i spent mm. a long time shaking it yes <laughs> say so, whatever you like about that Hot a- <laughs> 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 and i was thinking I've, oh this is gonna sound even worse now you know those um massagey things people use them that i should have just sellotaped it to that that yeah, is a good yeah. idea yeah. Yeah. but um yeah, anyway, sorry. There's a there's like a there's one specifically for I say they're normally for like mixing test tube samples up and all that lot. And they cost about sixty quid, so they're quite expensive. But literally three four seconds blitz with a ball bearing inside and it's perfectly mixed. And quite often, if you keep doing it, it'll bring bad paints back to being pretty good again. You just keep That's adding good. a bit of thinner and keep doing that. So anyway, massive side tangent again but yeah really enjoying that really sort of getting into that the other thing is i'm halfway through sleeving primal which is like 1200 oh, cards joking. oh my god um sleeves of so choice what are your sleeves of choice mayday not okay. i think if i had my time over i'd probably pick a different brand because they do have a bit of variation in them but you can always nearly always get them and they're cheap quite often so i just go with mayday and now i'm bought into it it feels like one of those things where I might as well just keep going with Mayday mm. because if I ever unsleeve things, I don't have to worry about what brand was this yeah. or anything. I just yeah. can be like, right, these were Maydays. They were this size. Go back into like a baggy or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I'm halfway through sleeving that and I've got the other half still to go and just really looking forward to playing more than just the prologue of Primal because I had such a blast with it the first time for the prologue um, that I cannot, I genuinely cannot wait to play more Primal and I don't know when the next game I'm going to get in is is next but really looking forward to it i remember sleeving my copy of wingspan with a particular brand of sleeve and then the sleeve became unavailable 
Yeah. So I had to pick another sleeve. Oh, FFG man. sleeves? It wasn't FFG. I can't remember oh, who it was. It wasn't FFG. I can't remember who it they was They got now. all big permissioned and now they sleeve did, kings yeah. tend to be quite close to them. I know a lot of people talk about sleeve kings are quite close yeah. to them. Yeah. I, I, I can't remember who it was, but it was a particular type of sleeve and I couldn't get it. So I had to order another brand and the sleeves do not look the same. No. Oh. And it's, I mean, only if you've picked them up and you look at them, you could probably go, well, they're not the same. But if otherwise, I don't, you don't tend to notice, but it does bug me. Um, it's funny you talk about paint. I never never used to do mini painting at all. Didn't like it. Didn't understand the point of it. Yeah. Didn't wasn't really a thing for me. Then COVID hit. Yeah. And I needed people. my need I needed my th- oh, the games workshop. They they they, they raked it in. <laughs> what a oh what a that what a turnaround for them. What that was amazing. But um I I, I ordered from them directly and it was like a two week waiting period at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, wow. their paints are all made in Nottingham. Yeah. They don't ship them in from abroad or anything no. like that. They're all made in Nottingham. So you can imagine that when everyone was like, oh, while I'm sat at home, what mm. could I possibly do? I'll paint. Like for a lot of people, it was just this sea of plastic miniatures yeah. that they had. But some people were just like, oh, I haven't done this in ages. I'll give it a go. Yeah. I, they had loads of production issues over COVID just purely because of need to fulfill demand. I got proper into it. I, I, I really, really enjoy it. And I sometimes I, I, I'll paint again. I'm, I went through painting quite a few of my Frostpunk miniatures. Yeah. And I really like the whole kind of snow effect that you kind of put on them. They look really nice. And I want to get back into it, but it's just time. Mm. I remember watching people paint miniatures back in the early days of like Zombicide when the plastics oh. in board games were not good. No. And they were painting them. And I remember thinking, what a waste of time because those miniatures doesn't matter whether you paint them or not, they just don't look good. No. Like you, unless you're a real pro painter putting time into making these like one piece, like vacuum, whatever they are, molded plastics. But now miniatures are so good that come in board games that I can totally understand why not. It's not just war gamers anymore, like tabletop war gamers that are getting into this. It's now like basically board gamers as well are really getting into painting miniatures up and making them look good. Again, Primal's perfect example, 20 odd giant monsters that you can paint and then six small models but those giant monsters you can mm. there's a lot of tr- tricks and speed paints and out there now that you can make them look really good really quick you got an airbrush i have got an airbrush mm. i have a love-hate relationship with an airbrush yeah i can imagine because they take a lot of work to maintain and to get yeah. right uh. like you've got air pressure and nozzle size and all this kind of stuff that that you have to kind of think about and get used to and changing one can mean you have to change the other and then you've got to get the, the paint a certain thickness other so you have to kind of get into a habit of using it and if you fall out of that habit you start spotting the signs of when you need to change things other and you, then your paint goes it so i do enjoy airbrushing but you have to kind of stick with it for a while mm. so yeah anyway Massive Hashtag wash yeah. for Massive me. Tangent. Quicks. Yeah, Quicks. that'll wash. Space I, I, paint when wash. When I first paint. started painting my figures, I did all the mansion stuff. Yeah. And then it's really quite bad because it was my first time ever painting yeah. all that. Then I did the zombie side box and they got better. Yeah. And then I did the Doom box and they're awesome. So yeah. I've got improved. It's, it's great fun. Yeah. But you've got to have the time, like you say. It's 100%. the time. And I, I find if I start doing that, I love it. Yeah. But then so. I've just got to get myself to start doing it again. Yeah. Part of no, I, so get... I always want to paint the Nemesis figures. So I really want to do it. I just, I just get keep... bored by about. Figure three, I'm like, oh, I've done that. Depends if, if you're only just oh. washing, I can imagine that would be pretty no, boring. No, I'm bored by, by figure three. You'd think yeah. it would be something I really like, wouldn't you? You'd think the kind of stuff I like yeah, doing, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. It's why this sun drop idea works so well. So, like the Nemesis sun drop, you know, basically all you're doing is like slap chopping, as they call it, which yeah. is just dry brushing white over the top of the plastic or of a base coat and then covering it in a single coat of speed paint. Yep. So it just makes it look a little bit, you know, you'll, you'll paint all the monsters red and all the heroes blue or whatever. And if you don't like painting, but you want a slight upgrade, it's such a nice mm. touch to put in. If it is a, even if you'd like, you can speed paint and, and proper slap chop models really quickly these days and get a good result out of them and make them look realistic. But the number of people I now see sun dropping board games like with this very quick single yeah. color over the whole model. And it just elevates it so much that yeah. I can understand people, why people are now just doing that, just to bring their board games up a little bit more, yeah. and sort of bling mm. it out. But. I need to wash my Skyrise set. I mean, you could you could have bought the, the Kickstarter version already done, but yeah. I, I didn't. I, um, but um, I want to, they those buildings in the Skyrise set in the deluxe edition are really, really pretty. Yeah. Um, and they've got such detail on, but they need, those details need to pop. And so you, they need a wash. Yeah. And with a wash, I think they'd look great. I um, would well, no way you'd have the time to paint them all with a full paint. Um, and, I, and, and you probably, they probably would look really, really nice if you did, if you, if you had the time, but just a bit of wash on there, a bit of null oil and away you go. 
So our final turn is finishing up. Thanks to you all for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe and review us on your podcast platform. And also we'd be forever grateful if you'd recommend us to a friend who you think might like the show. If you'd like to support the show and help shape future content, you can do that via coffee, spelt K-O-F-I. Or if you want to contact us, all those details are in the show notes. I'm now handing over the first player token to Chris. Um, He'll be back again next time with another episode. So until then, whose turn is it? We'll be right back.